Uh, I don't do executive sessions very often, uh, but in this particular case, because we're dealing with internal candidates, everybody's kind of being, uh, we want people to be, you know, honest and be treated fair. I'll be with them, so. We will be back. Ben, John. She's not on here. Oh, there she goes. She just couldn't. Oh, she did. Okay. Hey, ma'am. You with us, ma'am? Yeah. Oh, great. Um, we're we're going to try to do a couple things here at the same time. Um, in reviewing quickly uh, the consent agenda, one item that needed to be added uh, was related to the Clinton County Water Authority uh, on a rating system. I believe that we have that somewhere. But, yeah. Billy, do you want to speak on that? Yeah, the Water Authority and why that's relevant to somebody's uh, homeowner's insurance as far as. The Clinton County Water Authority. Uh, You're saying we have to sign the oh, yeah. Yes. Um, basically, we're getting ready to uh, resign the certification. Um, all the documents have come over in. Certification that comes around and it uh, actually has a discount attached to it for the residents. Um, so basically, we're going to go ahead and get the documents out, get them signed, get the council to approve. Yeah, you know, I saw one on the desk, but everybody has a copy of that? Correct. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, so we're going to add that to the consent agenda, which is going to be D. And I'm going to assume that I can just take the portion in red there and make that work. Is there any disagreement with that? Meeting agenda. Um, did, did we get the, the, the updates to the minutes of the meetings? Yes, sir. It's in that packet. Is everybody in agreement with the updates? Councilwoman Tran, did you have, uh, were you in agreement about the updates to the minutes? Yeah. Thank you. Right. So that'll give you the consent agenda. We'll do that as, as an update with the amended section of the uh, meeting agenda as it's written. Any objections? So, Mayor, if I may. Yes. Uh, so, um, we, everybody knows we're under construction for this next phase of our path system, and we've had some issues with the soil, and we have to go back to the designer ponding company, and in, they are not under contract right now, so in order to move forward with what we need from them, we will be asking tonight to add, and this just came about yesterday, uh, if you will, a new item that approves uh, payment for ponding company up to 2700 not to exceed $2,700. They feel like that 
the two or, uh, or three visits that they have to make to rectify this issue in the paperwork about the soil will not exceed that number. Might not be that much, but it won't go over that. So we would ask that you would approve um, that expenditure, that expanded scope for Pond and Company on the path system, Jester's Creek path system, and for yourself to execute any documents necessary. Everybody good with that? Uh, I have a question. Um, is this the same soil we're... No, no. different, different, oh. well, yes and no. It's not, it's not the soil in the pile, but it's, they have to verify certain soil for building, uh, okay. so they have to do something. Perfect. All right. Then just adding that to that, um, we have the uh, solid waste collection administrative policies and procedures. Are we good with that? Uh, if I may, can I that that as well? So in the, in the policy, there is a sentence that says we will accept from commercial customers only in person. We want to extend that to an email phone call option. Uh, so with that, and also there is a mention of uh, the prorated, whether or not you can get your money back for service that's already rendered as a resident, we know that. But we're, we just want to make sure that the policy mimics the contract. Whatever the contract says about commercial customers, we want to make sure that we have that opportunity to correct it if it's different in the sanitation policy. And that's what Councilwoman Tran and I were just discussing. So it will be approving that with the addition to the email and phone call option for application and to ensure that the prorated issue mimics the contract. Okay. So that would be approval uh, with the addition uh, of the statements made by the city manager. Any questions, comments on that? Obviously, we have um, Chris Pike. Famous finance individual. I'm just going to talk to us about our bills rate tonight. Um, and we have um, Dr. Beasley. Right for the I'm just going down. Uh, and then um, contingency, uh, basically for $5,000 related to CoStar. Um, this is basically um, a, a document that's necessary, or not a document, it's a contract that's necessary to be able to allow your, your new economic development director uh, to be able to use the software that's available to be able to figure out what's for sale in the city, who's listing what, and at what level. Um, it just, and for us to list ours as well. I mean, I mean, yeah, but uh, your cash stock has the one search you loop net, which is a variation. But it's a subsid subsidiary, yeah. So that, that's a combination of both, right, Val, for CoStar and LoopNet? Yeah, the uh, LoopNet is uh, $99 for a listing, and okay. the CoStar is $3.99 uh, per month. Okay. All right. Uh, public hearing on the village rate. Um, there's not a tax increase. We like okay. that. We'll have a good conversation about that. Uh, resolution for uh, job, des job description and pay classifications. You've had that from before. Um, second reading uh, on facility usage fees, giving the, the flexibility to, to the warrant to be able to lease the facility um, as necessary. Um, second reading to, to basically eliminate the exclusions uh, from water. Uh, first reading of uh, microbreweries and first reading of residential trash collection. That's basically uh, the different streets and different things like that. And just one, if I may, on the uh, resolution 2020 um, my miss, and I apologize, we had we removed from the department heads the uh, combination of experience and education, uh, but it was also stated in the qualification list for the finance director. So I will I'll delete that on the final version. I just wanted everybody to know. Uh, that being stated, uh, what we'll do is, uh, any other questions related to the, the formal agenda? All right. Um, then, yeah. Yes, ma'am. With the second reading of the um, D, public hearing for the ordinance um, 20, 2011 bus stops? Yes. Has it's actually greater than bus stops. Pardon? Uh, it's actually greater than bus stops, but anyway. So, since the last meeting, has anything changed? Any further discussion? Well, there's been several discussions in terms of information that's available. But remember, your your contract itself is taken. Right? This one right here basically gives you exemptions uh, to basically the barter system versus the city cap. And what we're saying here is we want those exemptions to be eliminated. They should have to follow the city cap. That gives us the ability to enforce uh, a little differently. So on one hand, you're not canceling your contract. On the other hand, you're allowing the city to enforce the city. Okay. That being said, um, 
being said, um, I'm going to go right into item number three in the work session. And uh, Mr. Chris Pine. Okay. You've got a public hearing as well as a resolution to adopt the uh, millage rate for calendar 2020. Uh, we have obtained the documentation necessary from the county, uh, both the tax assessors and the tax commissioner's office, in order to calculate the property tax estimated revenues for 2020. Uh, in preparing the analysis, we did uh, what's called a rollback calculation. Uh, essentially, in the state of Georgia, there is a uh, legal and formal definition of what a millage rate tax increase is. Uh, in the state of Georgia, they look at the average homeowner, uh, and if the average assessed value of a resident goes up, then you're required to either roll back the millage rate or announce a constant or increased millage rate as a property tax increase. Uh, in our calculation, what we did was uh, determine what the rollback amount would need to be in order for it to not be a millage rate increase. And accordingly, the uh, prior year rate uh, went from 9.38 to 9.081 meals, uh, which is $9 per 1,000 uh, assessed value. Um, the overall tax estimated does show an increase. Uh, the increase from 2019 to 2020 is due exclusively to new development or change of ownership within properties in the city limits. Um, with that, I'll be glad to answer any questions or go into more detail as council sees fit. Questions? Mr. Clark? No. Ms. Dean? Well, this is uh, something uh, a little out of my calculations, but. <laughs> You're saying that between 2019 and 2020, the new development in exchange for ownership is the reason? Yes, yeah, so if you look at your uh, five-year calculation, uh, that shows a slight increase from 2019 to 2020. That calculation of the increase in the taxes collected uh, is total revenue to the city. That's not on a per tax parcel. Uh, so the increase is due to new development or if one owner sold to another owner and the rate went up, that's where the increase would be. Uh, so a, a good example, would, let's, let's say uh, if the mayor and the councilwoman here both live side by side, his property value dropped and her property value went up, obviously she's gonna pay more taxes compared to last year, and he's gonna pay less taxes from last year. But you take the whole city as a whole and you average the mayor, the councilwoman's, everybody else's together, and you say, did on average, did the property values increase? Uh, and if they did, you have to roll back the millage rate or announce it as a property tax increase. Uh, in this case, the assessed value in the, the, the whole city of Morrow uh, increased just a tad over $9 million in assessed value. Uh, and so that's why we calculated the rollback from 9.38 to the 9.081. Ms. don't have any questions, I'm clear. Um, the assessed value, so the assessed value based on the county's tax digest is pre 
triggering in the city um, with the desire to not increase property tax. It's creating that triggering of that, that, that is substantial rollback. Yeah. 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 Um, <clears throat> It, 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 I don't know if I would say substantial. It looks uh, like it's about the same yeah. when from prior years. Point three is some change. You got yeah. yeah, the the total assessed value went from uh, one hundred twenty eight million to one thirty seven, uh, which is not a bad thing. You you want growth in your assessed value over time. Right. Right. Um, that way we can start knocking at. I don't know, what's that number that you, that you plan? 240 million. We gotta start knocking at that number. So we're knocking at that number. Um, do we have a percentage amount for that change in the value? Uh, it would be nine divided by 128, so all parking in at my head, so around 7%. All right, uh, yeah. So which is. Let's update the number. Yeah. It's a decent, it's a decent figure. I'll, I'll take it. We're headed in the right direction. I think it, it's better than the alternative, absolutely. That is correct. Ms. Tran, any questions? No question at this point. For, for the audience, because all we really have is you know, the five-year history. There's a secondary document that, that is talking about new growth. Um, and because you've got a public hearing, this might be a way to answer the question. Is, Explain to me a little bit more about what that new growth means and why is, even though I might have more money in our pocket as a city, why that's not a tax uh, It's not because the state says so. <laughs> uh, I, I wish I could give you a more technical explanation, but the state has, uh, in, in their wisdom, determined, and this, this happened right around the turn of the century, so 99 year 2000 time frame. Uh, they came out with the Taxpayer Bill of Rights, and within that, they defined what is a tax increase. Uh, they said the growth of a city is not a tax increase. Just because you're collecting more revenue doesn't mean that you're increasing taxes. Uh, in the state's legal description, a tax increase is if the average homeowner's assessed value goes up, without an offsetting exemption also going up to offset that. So if you had a property tax freeze, for example, uh, in that situation, you either need to roll back or you announce it as a tax increase. Uh, and if you meet the definition of a tax increase, you have to have additional hearings. You, instead of just one tonight, you have to have three. Uh, the state determines the time of day that they need to be announced and and how far apart they should be and how you advertise them, et cetera. So uh, the, the increase itself, they don't look at total revenue. They expect a city to annex. They expect a city to grow and develop. And they expect, they expect property to be sold from one person to the other at a higher value. They don't consider those increasing taxes. Uh, so in short, just because you make more doesn't mean you're increasing taxes. You're essentially growing the pie. Uh, if the pie was the same size, but then you still collect more, that's a tax increase. So, is that a fair explanation? But it, I, I liked your explanation earlier, uh, you know, when we talked, where if the city had one house, and now a builder builds another house. Mm -hmm. if your revenue doubled, but that's not a tax increase. That's okay. just you grew the city. This is, this is a question out of curiosity. Um, so if we didn't roll back and the assessment value did increase, it technically wouldn't be considered a property tax increase? It would be, it would yes. Be. Okay. Because yeah. of the assessed value growing and maintaining the same millage rate, it would still be considered a tax yes. increase. That was clever ways politicians used to play that game years ago. It, it's quite incendiary the way they worded it, but it was to accomplish exactly what you're doing tonight. They wanted cities to think long and hard about not rolling it back, and they wanted a little bit of pressure to do so. Uh, you know, whether that's right or not, it, neither here nor there, but that's yeah. political. This isn't the public hearing section of it, we'll have that later. But, but the point being is during the, the, the times of COVID and different things along those lines, this is not, you know, having a tax increase to take more money out of your pocket or the business community's 
I get the idea that we're going to play with the same set of cards we had last year. And uh, even though we know our business license revenue and a number of other revenue streams are, are challenged, um, you know, we've done our part uh, to try to do the best we can. Uh, any other questions on this subject? Session issues. I don't know that we would plunge into them for fear of starting late. Because um, three minutes is a very short period of time. Yeah. Um, as soon as we start, we regret it. So. Two minutes is not going to be very long, uh, but we'll start right at 7 30. And we've got a, a wonderful proposal from the superintendent of schools, um, so you'll want to want to hear that. And there's not enough time to be able to stop too much and go vote because I think that line's about two hours coming here. <laughs> Can you just take a second. Try to reflect uh, that we've ended executive session. Um, we have not reached a conclusion. Uh, we have a, uh, a little bit of uh, additional uh, discussion, and uh, city manager will make recommendations to the city council uh, at, a, at a later date. Um, we do very much appreciate everybody who came out to interview. Um, our, our bench is uh, pretty good, um, and it brings a different you know, flavor and taste to, to what we have. Um, so I, I think they did uh, the city proud, and. Uh, uh, we'll adjourn for the evening.